Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our gospel lesson, Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 39, as read a few moments ago. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ. I knew of a pastor back in Wisconsin, in South Wisconsin, when I was in Janesville, who used to always come up with all kinds of sayings to help his congregation keep their attention on what was important. For example, if someone were to come up to him and say, how are you doing? He would always respond, blessed by the Lord. And he taught his congregation to do the same. And so when they were out into the community, people would ask, oh, how are you doing? And they would always say, blessed by the Lord. Another one of his sayings would go something like this. Always keep the main thing the main thing. His point was, when it comes to our faith, to always keep Jesus at the center of our life. Because Jesus is the main thing. Throughout the history of the world, I can think of no one who was better at keeping the main thing, the main thing, than our Savior Jesus Christ. And it all began at the start of his public ministry. By the time of our text, Jesus had already called four men to be his disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. They were just beginning to learn the purpose for Jesus' coming receiving on-the-job training from the master rabbi himself. After leaving the synagogue, the place where Jesus went so often, he and his disciples arrived at the house of Andrew and Simon Peter. While there, Jesus receives word that Simon's mother-in-law was sick with a high fever. So our text says, Jesus came and took her by the hand, and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. You know, as I read this text, I couldn't help but think how easy it must have been for the people surrounding Jesus to become confused at his coming, thinking that he came to make life in this world easier to bear. And certainly, that was a result of his coming. Just look at our text. Already at the beginning of his public ministry, Jesus is performing all kinds of miracles. He's healing Simon Peter's mother-in-law. He's casting out demons. That's making life in this world easier to bear. But was that it? Is that all? Did he come only to heal Simon's mother-in-law and whomever else he came into contact? Did he come only to drive out demons? Did he come only to create a type of heaven on earth? Is that the main thing? Certainly the people of Jesus' day thought that. At least many of them did. Our text says, That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. The whole city lined up at the door, hoping, praying for healing. But what does Jesus do? Our text says that early the next morning, while it was still dark, Jesus leaves for a desolate place. He left. He left not because he did not care, I can assure you that Jesus cared. But he also knew his main purpose for coming was not to heal every disease inflicted on, inflicted on mankind at that moment. You see, healing would come, but it would come in a different way. It would come through a cross and an empty tomb. So where does that leave us? What are we looking for 
in Jesus. Do we want a Jesus who dries out the evils in our lives? Is that the main thing? No doubt Jesus has the power to do so. He has the power to heal the sick. He has the power to cast out demons. And he has the power to help us all out of all of our problems. Do we have financial problems? Jesus can deal with that. Want your team to win the Super Bowl? Jesus can do that. Want that shiny new sports car? Jesus can make it happen. Want good health? Jesus can heal. As God, Jesus can do whatever God wants to do. But if he were to do all these things, what would it say about the main thing? Now, don't get me wrong. Jesus can and he does give healing. He can and he does drive out demons. He can and he does help us with our earthly problems. That's easy to see. Many of us can attest to how God has worked in our lives, how, how Jesus has worked in our lives to make things better, to heal us during our times of illness. But there's so much more to what Jesus came to do than simply to provide earthly healing and help. That point is made clearly in our text. For when Jesus is found, he says, let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. In no uncertain terms, Jesus says that he's going to keep the main thing the main thing. Yes, a loving Jesus heals people. Yes, a loving Jesus drives out demons. Yes, a loving Jesus helps people in need. But a loving Jesus also realizes that his purpose involves something greater than the here and now. Jesus came to preach. He came to tell the good news. He came to proclaim the word of salvation to others. He wanted to share a message for all sinners who need saving from their sins. Jesus knows that we are inflicted with a far worse illness than Simon Peter's mother-in-law experienced. An illness that leads to death. Both physical death and eternal death brought on by our own disobedience to God's word. And that is why Jesus came. He came for sinners. More specifically, Jesus came to die for sinners. He knew pointing people to the cross where he would endure our punishment is keeping the main thing the main thing. He knew telling others about a Savior who died so that we could live with God is keeping the main thing the main thing. He knew that proclaiming the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord is keeping the main thing the main thing. And throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus never strayed from his main task of being our Savior. Oh, there would be temptations along the way. The devil would tempt him for 40 days as Jesus fasted in the wilderness. In the Garden of Gethsemane, the devil tried to entice him away, enticing him to take a different path, path than the path that leads to the cross. Even as he stood trial before Caiaphas and Pontius Pilate, Jesus could have made it all go away by simply answering the charges they levied against him. But, as the Bible says, he did not open his mouth. Why? Because Jesus was keeping the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing, was to earn the forgiveness for all of our sins. The main thing was to win salvation for all who believe. The main thing was to die and rise again so that we would live with the comfort of resurrected bodies. For us today, the temptation is to take our eyes off 
of the main thing. We've got so many things going around us, so many things in our lives, so many things that fill up our time. It's easy to take our eyes off of the main thing. The, temp- the temptation is to focus on these things, the things of our life, gaining more and more wealth. The temptation, and I may get myself into a little trouble here, but the temptation is to focus in on our child's activities, even if it means sacrificing their own spiritual growth. There's even the temptation to focus solely on our good deeds, the good deeds we do for others. Now, don't misunderstand me. Being wealthy is not a sin, neither are children's sports activities, neither are good deeds done for others. But if ever these things come in the way of the main thing, if ever they get in our way of our children's or our own spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ, now we've got a problem. Good deeds are good. Works of service are good. We ought to do them. In fact, it's what our faith does. But works of service, even works of service, are not the main thing. Jesus Christ, crucified and risen for you, that is the main thing. And it's the motivation for all the things we do in Jesus' name. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, I plead with you that in all that you think, in all that you say, in all that you do, whether you are teaching your child or serving someone in need or just having a casual conversation with a friend, always, always, always keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues now as we make confession of our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed printed on the back cover of your hymnal. Please stand.